I don't know if I'd necessarily say it's more appealing. I'd say it's different. It's complementary. It's another arrow in the quiver of the investment professional. Investors are interested in long short strategies generally because they want to control their beta or market exposure for a particular portion of their portfolio. And if you're interested in ESG long short strategy, um, you're, you're, you're looking to actively short you know, the uh, ESG miscreants, you know, the tobacco companies, the fracking companies of the world, that sort of thing. On the long side, uh, Appleseed Capital, we're long-term investors. We're looking to align ourselves with companies with uh, inexpensive valuations, with management teams that uh, look at their business with a long-term perspective. Right? We're not looking to be involved in companies that are looking to manipulate their, their numbers for the next quarter or even the, the next year. And these sorts of long-term perspectives gives, gives them uh, a long-term view uh, for shareholders, for stakeholders, for customers, for the environment and society at large. And, and we find that to be a profitable endeavor. But we're looking to short companies that don't necessarily have that perspective, who aren't paying attention to these environmental issues. And we find uh, you know, shorting these uh, ESG miscreants, as you would call them, can be profitable, can, can uh, uh, lower risk, can increase diversification, and it's a, it's a higher level in which ESG uh, uh, investors can align investor capital with their personal or institutional values. On the long side, we are uh, actively working with our, the management teams in which we are invested. Constantly talking to them about fundamental issues with the business, talking about environmental issues, societal issues. You know, from time to time, multiple times a year, we will file shareholder resolutions uh, with these companies. As an example, we recently filed a shareholder resolution with one of our companies uh, to improve the incentive system for the board directors. We were in negotiations with the company, they subsequently removed um, uh, the things that we had problems with and we, we, we then uh, uh, withdrew our shareholder resolution. So that was a win-win for everybody involved. On the short side, it's a little more problematic because uh, capital mar markets view short sellers as nefarious actors. Um, you know, truthfully, we think of ourselves as more so seekers of truth. Um, and they don't really want to talk to us. Um, and beyond that, if you're a tobacco company that we're shorting, no matter what kind of stewardship or engagement we're involved in, you, just, you simply cannot change the fundamental business that they're in. With the companies that we're looking to short, they have a few common characteristics on the fundamental perspective. Typically, they've got weak balance sheets, uh, limited cash flows relative to their valuation, uh, significant insider selling. Uh, but beyond that, we're looking for other key issues. These are companies that typically are either um, uh, we would characterize as an unsafe company like an a, a oil and gas fracker, an unsustainable company, someone who makes a product that's, that's you know, essentially going away, or an unethical company like a, like a predatory subprime lender. And these companies have other, a, a few other common characteristics like they earn returns on capital below their weighted average cost of capital, they carry huge uh, litigation and or regulatory risks. Their products have limited, uh, uh, if any, societal value. Um, and there's a fair amount of insider uh, self-dealing and poor corporate governance. These are companies that we, you know, we simply aren't interested in being long, and oftentimes we think it'd be profitable for us to short them as well. 